We want to make a video explaining the difference between catamarans and monohulls. This is a question that people ask a lot for some reason, and we've done a fair amount of research. It's what people argue about the most. Catamarans versus monohulls is like a religious debate, or like a cats versus dog, apples versus oranges, fruit dessert versus chocolate dessert. They're both good, but there's distinct differences between the two. So we're going to talk about the pros and cons of both. Neither one of them's perfect, and neither one of them's terrible. First of all, if you don't know what we're talking about, a uh, monohull is what you think of as a traditional sailboat with just with one hull. And a like catamaran ha has two holes, and this is what a catamaran looks like. And the two holes are connected by a bridge deck that has living space between them, typically, unless there's like a racing catamaran. We're going to be talking cruising, sailing catamarans versus cruising, sailing monohulls. Not racing, not motor, specifically sailing, specifically for cruising. Our first subject is cost. When it comes to cost, monohulls win hands down. It's not really a contest. There are many more monohulls than there are catamarans. That gives greater selection, greater variety, greater choice. Catamarans are necessarily harder to build, like they're more complicated to build, they have more parts. Uh, the rigging needs to be much thicker to handle the kind of loads that are placed on them with a catamaran. All of this means catamarans are more expensive. They have two sets of systems, two engines, two fuel systems, more expensive. If you're on a budget, monohulls win. Many people will compare like a 40-foot catamaran to a 40-foot monohull. I don't think that's a fair comparison. I think if you're going to compare a 40-foot catamaran, it should be to like a 45 or a 46-foot monohull. Uh, even that being said, a 45 or 46-foot monohull is still probably going to be cheaper than a 40-foot catamaran. Because a catamaran has two sets of systems for many things, the maintenance on a catamaran is also greater, which factors into the long run. Catamarans don't win when it comes to cost. The next topic is availability. This kind of goes hand in hand with cost because there's so many more monohulls being built. I think the statistic was like 93% of the market is monohulls. That means with availability, you have variety of choice, you have different styles, you have more boats of different ages. Catamarans have really only been around for the past 15, 16 years in a cruising capacity. So that means you really won't find many catamarans older than 15 years old. But for monohulls, there's 30 year old monohulls that are really great cruising boats. So when it comes to availability, monohulls are easier to get a hold of and more plentiful. Next thing people compare is performance. Except for upwind, catamarans win on performance. They usually outpace monohulls by 20 to 30 percent. There are cruising catamarans that have dagger boards that perform well uh, upwind. That being said, if you're doing upwind sailing a lot, then that's the one area where monohulls might be able to outperform a cat. It's debatable though, if you veer off the wind on a cat and get higher speeds, some people say you can keep up with a mono. Also, with regard to performance and cruising, uh, cruising sailboats specifically, you can load much more in the way of provisions and, and supplies and stuff and a monohull than you can on a catamaran. A catamaran's going to lose performance a lot faster than a monohull will for the same amount of, of load. There's a saying that a cat becomes a dog when it's overloaded, which is an advantage of the monohulls because they have the heavy keel on the bottom adding extra thousand pounds or so of provisions and whatnot is not gonna over it's not gonna affect the overall weight of the boat that much as compared to a catamaran. And because a catamaran has so much room inside, it can be really easy to overload. So that's one of the things you gotta be conscious of. Catamaran. Next category is docking. Docking tends to be easier with a catamaran because they have two engines and easier maneuverability. That's true. With regard to docking also though there are fewer slips for catamarans than there are for monohulls. That's why you tend to see the catamarans parked out at the end of the docks because the slips aren't wide enough further in. So if you go the traditional route with a monohull, you're going to have much more plentiful options for where you're going to park your boat in a marina. Another disadvantage for a catamaran for, for docking can be the amount of windage a catamaran has because they're so high off the water if you're getting an offshore breeze that's blowing from the shore to the water, it can be harder to maneuver your catamaran up to the dock because it's going to get blown away easier. Okay, next is dinghy storage. 
I'd say catamarans win this one because almost all catamarans have dinghy davit and monoholes. Yeah, monoholes, there are plenty of monoholes with dinghy davits, but there are also mo many monoholes that don't have dinghy davits and they have to uh, store their dinghy up on their deck. Because a davit system tends to come stock on your catamaran, yeah, I think she's right. I'd say catamarans win the dinghy storage award. Next category is comfort. Cat so wins the comfort. <laughs> because catamarans don't heal, people get less fatigued during a long passage. Things don't fly out of cabinets as much. You can set your wine glass down and it won't tip over like a monohole. At anchor, they don't roll like a monohole does. This is where catamarans really shine. Because 98% of the time you won't be sailing, comfort is a real consideration for choosing a cruising boat. The interior design of a catamaran is more spacious than a monohole. This tends to be true because monoholes are designed to be usable while healing over during passages. If you're healing during a monohole, you want to be able to be within reach of something. You know, one hand for yourself, one hand for the boat, even while inside. Because of that, many boat designers make it so that you're never further away than an arm reach from something. They don't particularly like big open spaces inside of monoholes, and this can lead to a little bit of a more cramped feeling, but it is by design. So if space is a priority, catamarans edge out here. One of the biggest considerations is safety. This is what you'll commonly hear people arguing back and forth, cat versus mono, cat versus mono, is the safety aspect of it. There's a saying that says, catamarans will float upside down on the top of the ocean, and monoholes will sit right side up at the bottom of the ocean. The main idea being there that the biggest advantage of a monohole is that if it does capsize, if it does roll over, it will self-correct. So it's never going to get stuck upside down on the top of the ocean. And the biggest advantage for a catamaran is if it gets a hole in it, it won't sink. It's not supposed to sink to the bottom of the ocean. Then when comparing the two, you have to consider the likelihood of both of those events happening. Now, if someone is an irresponsible sailor, either scenario can happen. You can hole your hole on a monohole, or you can flip your catamaran. Cruising catamarans are very hard to flip if sailing conservatively. With a catamaran, you have to sail by the numbers. But if you do sail by the numbers, you have very little risk of flipping over. Sailing by the numbers means that as your speed and wind speed increases, you have to know how much sail you should or should not have up. This is one of the advantages of a monohull with that regard, is that when the wind picks up in a monohull, you will know it because you start healing over more and more. You get a very obvious physical feedback mechanism. And one of the advantages for the monohull is that when the wind picks up, and the wind's blowing really hard in the sails, the boat will heal over and it'll bleed off some of that wind. It's kind of like a pressure release mechanism. Whereas on a catamaran, the boat fights the healing due to its wide base, and you can be overpowering your boat and not know it if you're not careful. This is when accidents and flipping can happen. But if you're sailing your catamaran or your monohull, you should be paying attention. And you shouldn't get into a situation where you're way overpowering things, especially if you're on sea swells of any size. What about surfing? Monoholes sail sit in the water and catamarans sit on the water. One of the things it's more prone to do is to surf down uh, waves. And that can be dangerous if you want to avoid pitch pulling, where a pitch pulling is where if you were to surf down a wave and go too fast, your bows would go into the water, and if they stick in too far, you might flop over. That's obviously a really bad thing to happen. Alternatively, you could, if you were to surf down a wave and not steer it right, you could veer off and then barrel, there's a better word for this, but barrel roll, get flipped with the wave. That same thing is possible with a monohole, but monoholes are less, have less of a tendency to surf down waves. If you are sailing a catamaran, many people prefer to use some sort of drogue to slow it down if there is following seas and they feel like they're surfing too fast. And lastly, one advantage that monoholes have, I'd say it's an advantage, this is a point of view, that monoholes have over catamarans is that the monoholes have the stereotypical romantic idea of sailing. Like, that's the image you get when you think of, like, sailing into the sunset. Probably what comes into your mind is some sort of monohull. If you're enamored with the romantic idea of sailing, the traditional idea of sailing, then you've probably already decided that you want a monohull.
catamarans, because catamarans are new, they don't really have any sort of like legacy built up behind them, I guess. And that's maybe a Polynesian. <laughs> that's all that we have. Did we miss anything? I know it's kind of a religious debate, just play nicely. They're both good. Are there things that we didn't cover that are worth talking about? We'll be really curious to hear what you have to say. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next video.